yeah, I got the live stream, Gordon. I'm a fucking professional. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Is that why I've had to message you on uh, Friday afternoons going, hey, where's the episode? Uh, well, first of all, I did that on my own. And also, when are you going to upload the episodes before Thursday? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Try to call me out. I got your, I got your number on lock, bitch. We're good? Holy shit, and we're back. Jake, uh, well, Pharaoh M. Moose, excuse me, I almost said Amos again. I've been saying it all fucking day long. It's every year. <laughs> every year. Pharaoh Moose is back along with Jake, and you brought your new photographer. Well, I don't know if you, you're new new, but Elios is yep. here. Nice to meet you, man. Here. Appreciate it. Yeah. Back at Blind Ninja Studios, we just did a very, very heated discussion topic on Department of Defense about why the new Batman movie is so great. Hot chicks. <laughs> <laughs> and why Casey is wrong on all those opinions. Yeah, but we can all agree that Batman Beyond was the best, so... True. Yes. Yes, that is the consensus, I think, among the whole group was yeah. that Batman Beyond was the way to go. <laughs> like I said, I still want a live action of that. Yeah. But it means... I don't know who would play Terry McGinnis, though. And, like, that's that's not this show, so... Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be... I, who's the kid that was in the newer Tron movie? The re, Not quite remake, but a continuation... The kid, the kid from Ready Player One, right? Was, was, was that same kid? I don't know. No, I, I don't feel like so. I saw that kid. No, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait you, you're talking about the one um, with uh, the hot chick Olivia Wilde, right? Yes. Hot chicks. Um, I, wasn't that Chris? That wasn't that wasn't that Chris, was it? He's too old now, I think, because that was how many? How long ago was that? Tron Legacy was 2010. Yeah. No yeah. way. That was a while. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That felt like that movie just came out yesterday. Well, yeah. that was the one where they they had that. They, that was the first time we saw um like a lot of the 3D 3D, 3D guy stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah Bri- uh, what's his name? Who Bridges. cares? Uh, the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the hair. Yep. Yep. Guy with the Jeff hair Bridges. was brought back. Jeff, yes, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Oh, yeah. wow. They, it they, was they did it. Garrett Hedlund, who I don't... That name sounds right over Yeah, this. I think he's just a quick flash in the pan as far as yeah. acting goes. Married out. to Emma Roberts, I guess. I don't know who that is, but she sounds like a hot chick. <laughs> she got <laughs> it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. With a name like Emma, she's got to be hot, right? That's and another good slogan. I think from maybe Batman. British. <laughs> who knows where that one's from? <laughs> with the what? name, oh, I gotta say the name I, to like give I, it away. I missed, I missed the. Oh, missed I was the like, with a name like Emma, she's gotta be hot. I don't know. Is, she, is it Schmuckers? No, Welchers. It's Welchers. Oh yeah. With a name like Welchers, it's gotta be good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was trying to think of a movie. I thought we were back in my They're always commercials. They're always commercials. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> So what what have you guys been up to? I, it's been about a year. So it was April last year that you guys yeah. were here when we were coming fresh out of the yeah. pandemic. That we're I think here. what I said last time was I was trying to work with more people that I could see in real life. You know, like more local artists. And I think I did that this time around. I have a bunch of songs with a bunch of different people um, that recorded in my studio at my house. So it's not like. You know, some guy in France. Last time was a guy in France and a bunch of German producers. Um, now I have a bunch of. I think I still have a bunch of German producers, but, <laughs> but but I still have a like more local producers and a lot more local artists on this on this new project, starting with this real yeah life Elios. Human hey, they've been on the here. show before, but now you got to introduce yeah, yourself. I have never even been on a podcast. Uh, yeah, so I started just. Did some YouTube videos and posted some stuff on Instagram, and Pharaoh found that and was like, "Okay, he's hired." Yep. So, <laughs> it's like, we need this guy on the team. Let's see if this guy wants to be on the team. Reached out to him. He spoke back. We met for some coffee with the team and was like, "Do you want to be a part of this team?" And he said, "I have nothing but time, baby. Let's do it." <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And that was like th- right before the new year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right before New Year. Yep. Yeah. And ever since then, he's been shooting all the photos, and it's been great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun uh, working for Pharaoh, definitely. Uh, yeah. So for I, now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have to pay him more now, now uh, right? And every well, time he says, like, I really enjoy working well, we for you. We, <laughs> we wait for the beer company to throw in the sponsorship. Oh, okay, okay. And then we... 
funnel it down to the photo guy because at the end of the day, without the photos, it didn't happen. Yeah. See, I, I just need you to say whether it's true or not that you're not paying him because I know Ben and Justin will hear this and then I can think, well, I am not here's paying Pharaoh. him. I'm not, I'm not paying him. We are, have a partnership where um, everything we do, if any of it becomes anything, then you know then then that's where the money comes yeah. from yeah we do have like a little contract set in place just to ensure like you know yeah we're adults uh, right yeah so right? once profit yeah, yeah i don't think he is <laughs> we're yeah. Yeah. but we're over here we're adults <laughs> you know i don't know why i got thrown in with jake yeah. but I'm not bad about it. <laughs> it's the way you drink your beer you know you drink just like jake with your mouth yeah true oh ah, yeah there is that uh, <laughs> i mean i mean your mouth yeah. We already went over checking over show. here. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's called booping. <laughs> and Supreme Court judges do it too, okay? And they're adults. And they're adults. <laughs> it's booping. Everyone knows. Me and Squee in the game. We all used to do it. We still do. We're doing it right now. It's the whitest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, under the mask and this fake. Oh, I'm going to get canceled for this. <laughs> but I am actually a white guy. I am. Just a frat prank gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it got on and like, you're a real artist? I'm like, I, I guess. How much more black paint do we have? <laughs> plenty, plenty. Well, uh, four years, it's been fun. Nice knowing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is so canceled. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw, when did you release Party on Maui? That came um, out not too long ago. Yeah, the 15th of December. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. I think that, that sounds was... right. I think I'm getting better at this remembering thing. Yeah, but we dropped it in December because December's not up on Hawaii. <laughs> it's, it's so cold. It's Christmas. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, this is the song we got to drop right now because something about the snow just makes me think Hawaii. And we put it out because his mother is actually in Hawaii. Yep. And um, yep. he was visiting Hawaii. I was. We kind of planned that I would go to Hawaii at some point too, but then like that would just become too much. And we're playing this. Africa trip, so it's like, uh, okay, we gotta, you know, we gotta do something, you know, we gotta be adults about it, so we can't just go to everywhere we wanna go, we gotta plan, <laughs> you can go to Hawaii, it's your mother, you know, and then we'll go to Africa, it's my land, you can come <laughs> with me though, I'm gonna take you, we can go to my land together, <laughs> so that's how we broke it down, because I was supposed to be in Hawaii too, we we're gonna shoot the music video on a beach, yep. and, um, but then, you know, the war in, you know, Ukraine started becoming a thing, and then all of our budgeting was actually in crypto, and then crypto started you know going down the rail so it was like well the budgeting just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and it was like okay we can't do all the trips we wanted to do until after you know crypto goes back up to the moon and then we can do all those trips again but yeah we had this solid plan going for this release man but now it's kind of still there because we're still going after we bought those tickets we're going yeah, the trip to Africa we yeah. were talking about on the last show, but you yep. guys are going over there for 30 days. Yep. 30 days. What's going on with that? We're going to do a bunch of shows at a bunch of venues and uh, eat a lot of African food. What, yeah, that's uh, crazy. What, what, what country or countries? We're going to Togo. Yeah, okay. we're going to be primarily in Togo. I mean, yeah. it's it, my understanding is where we're going to be at is going to be a little bit close to some other countries, so we might take a jaunt yeah, over. Where, where are we going to go? Um, uh, I'm really bad this at my Algeria? geography right now um <laughs> but but i know one of the i'll look at ghana 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 is right next to togo. ghana is right next to togo yeah. and, and actually the in in loam i guess the it's kind of got a uh, twin cities type of vibe where you've got across the border in uh ghana oh that is right on the it's, border it's literally yeah. right yeah. on the border and so you can literally have lunch in loam and then go over to ghana and do some stuff over in ghana come back but like it's it's super fluid across mm -hmm. that border. It's like right Mexico now. and El Paso and what's yeah. the other one? And so, uh, Raul Juarez. Yeah. 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 And so I guess I, my understanding is we might do a little bit there, but I think we'll mostly be in Togo, uh, given that that's where he has more contacts, yeah. more people. So so how did that even come up? Like, Well, I, hadn't, I, know... I haven't gotten back to Africa so, since originally coming here. Yeah, he's from Togo originally. Okay. Well, he's... He... Two years ago. Yeah. Well, 20, 20 ago. some years at least. Yeah. Since he's been back to Togo. So, you know, my brother, who also wears a mask, also doesn't show his face, he <laughs> is um, also, he's getting married, and his wife will also have to wear a mask. She also <laughs> <doesn't have> to <laughs> what the family does. And um, so because of that, I'm going to go this year, and also my album is being, you know, 
It's going to be my biggest release ever. So I'm going to do it in Africa because the dollar goes a lot further <laughs> where I am from. So if our crypto is shrinking here and we can't do the extravagant big things we want to do here, well, okay, well, then let's just go somewhere else where we can do it. And we're going to go to Mexico, but none of us speak Spanish. And also on top Jorge, of that... No. Well, you were, where were you at the world? Where were you at the meeting? You know? But my brother, the other guy, he also doesn't work, you know, speak Spanish. We couldn't ship him down to Mexico and then be like, have your wedding in Mexico and then I'll meet you in Mexico. You just stay there. We're coming to you. We bought the Delta tickets. We'll be there soon. Ish. When are we going? Next month? Next month, baby. Yep. April 26th. Awesome. So right after we drop the album, we're going to be in town for a few more weeks trying to promote it and then um, set things up over there, get on a plane land and it's all just start running as soon as we land you know so how do you do you have like venues and shows lined up already not yet there or you just but gonna... we are actively working on that yeah i, I speak the language we, so. we have plenty of contacts already that we've made and we're, we're working with those contacts to book some different venues and shows and stuff yeah. like that but we don't have anything set in stone yet what, um, what's the music scene like over there because i mean I, I know rap here in the united states you you think rap you think west coast east coast yeah. right was it? I'm not a historian. Well, you think by rap. Age. You think rap down there. You think like what all the young kids are doing. Sure. Yeah. Like, rap, rap is huge over there right yeah. now. Rap, rap in a lot of and actually in particular. So it's Afro not in Togo, pop. but in Nigeria specifically, rap is like absolutely going nuts. And they actually have their own versions of things where they call it like Afro pop. They also do a lot of. Um, it's it's kind of like UK grind. I don't know if you're familiar with that kind of scene, but there's like a there's a whole separate version of like uh, like. UK grime music that specifically that it sounds it it sounds kind of like uh I don't know if you've heard of Pop Smoke or something like that but it just it has a very very specific sound to it. Yeah, it's like and when you're in the gym and you want like that heavy bass. It's drill music. Drill music. Yeah, drill music. Drill music. And they they they've kind of co-opted some of that. There's there's a lot of different those genres and they're really into it, especially like I said in Nigeria. But there's definitely some. It's kind of it's filtered out throughout that entire continent. And any of the big in any of the big cities, you'll find lots of rap artists. Oh yeah. Wait, so this is like drill music, rap? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. yep. Drill rap. Yep. Cool. Yep. They do they do lots of that and then lots of Afro pop. Lots of Afro pop. So yeah, the only band that I can think of, well, and now even band, it's like a duo group. Uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, D Antwoord or Die Antwoord? Die Antwoord? Yeah. Oh, hmm. Antwood? Yes. No, Ant yeah. 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 And Die I Ant don't know what genre they would be thrown under. It's just wild. Yeah. I listen to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, it sounds very Dutch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, a little no, those bit of. Just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't understand. I, I'll, I'll be, I mean, they're in, using like three or four different languages yep. in their songs, and it, it's, some of it's rap, some of it's kind of almost like. I don't know, weird flash horror music video kind okay. of style. It's different. It's 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 cool to listen to. Yeah. I don't know. It's something I'd really search out. On, yeah. On occasion. I, I would say that most of the stuff that I've heard that comes from like that Afro pop genre sounds really similar to stuff that you'd hear oh, in okay. like uh, like any of it, like Jamaican music basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, Island it sounds, music. It sounds really similar to a lot of Caribbean vibes. Um, right. a lot of like dancehall type stuff. Um. It, it, it has a very similar kind of rhythm to all of it, um, which is, is really danceable. That's mm -hmm. one of the big things. And I think that's one of the areas where we hope to be able to be, to, mm -hmm. to, that we think people really like a lot of stuff that we have because it's really danceable music. And that's that's what they love. I mean, that's what all of the stuff that I hear from any of those types of places is really all about. Is, is it going to dance well in a nightclub or like that type of setting? And I... I, yeah, so I, yeah. we're going to do no day shows, all night shows, <laughs> with the lights turned off. Where is he? I think he's over there. Hey, I think he's over there. I like the music, though. I don't really know where he is. This could just be MP3, but very good show. I'm actually right behind you. Whoa! Yeah. So are, are you pushing your music over there? You, know, you said oh, yeah. you got some contacts and friends over there. Yep. Send them CDs or, yep. you know, well, I suppose it's even... My entire so family is over like, there. It's, it's all snail mail, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sent it last month. It should be getting there about tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> then they'll sort the papers out, hoping that it's scratched right. by the time it gets there. Well, I remember even 10 years ago, I'd go to Warp Tour, and there'd be people, you know, bands, like, trying to sell CDs. They're yeah. like, hey, I, we have to sell these CDs so we can play at next week's show. Yep. Hey, is that still a thing? Yes, oh, it is. is it? It's called merch. Yeah, <laughs> you have to sell it. Yeah. 
So ba basically, I think that's kind of gets into the way I think most independent artists work these way these days, which is that you don't make very much of your money off of any of the stuff that you're doing online. But I hear Spotify pays out so well. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> well. only for Joe Rogan. I'm actually working on that. Right now. Have, you, have you changed your name to Joe Rogan? It, it, it turns out that a little bit of racism is actually really good for your paycheck. <laughs> it turns out I'm very uncomfortable with it, and it like, and it just hasn't worked for the brand. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> um, but but yeah, the I, I think that the the model for a lot of independent artists these days is to make almost all of your money on shows and merch, and that you try to use your albums, your songs, any of the other stuff you're putting out as essentially promotional items to bring people to those events, and that's why you've seen the price of like tickets to concerts go through the roof. Mm -hmm. Is that it used to be you know that was more of the promotional item. That was, you know, get people to go listen to your CD or buy your album was that they come to a $5 concert and they go, that was great music. I love that music. Whereas these days you put all that stuff out for free on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on whatever platforms you can and say, here's what we offer. Yeah, here's who I am. And then hope that they then I like that stuff and then come to your show, buy your merch, buy whatever. So when, when you guys are talking merch, are you guys talking like uh, t-shirts and stuff? Or are you guys selling uh, actual albums? Like, like I guess percentage-wise, like where's where's that coming from? I mean, it, it can be any of it. I mean, we, you know, we certainly sell albums. That's definitely a thing. But it's it's I would say that that's less frequent given that people can have access to almost all of our music for free. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really want, almost everything's up on on SoundCloud. Almost everything's up on one of the services you already pay for, or uh, or can get access to really easily. Um, but with them, we also did, do have. I mean, we sell a decent amount of T-shirts and pants and all types of stuff like that to try to try to just have other options for people. And you know, and and in particular, we like to, we like to have fun with that type of stuff. We like to make things that I don't think other people are. Yeah, it's crazy because <laughs> when the album drops on the twenty first of March, God willing, come on, baby. Um, so when the album drops on the twenty first of March, we will also have my first line of like merch that is gonna be online on the website um, that you can buy. Like oh, wow. anyone can buy it from anywhere. That will be shipped to you to your home. Yeah. Um, that and you will just go to my show and yeah. buy a shirt or. Was you this know. the stuff you were showing me? Yes, yes. Yeah. This is a new line of merch that we put on the website the other day that is not available for purchase yet, yep. but will be after the 21st. Yep. You know? Then you can Gordon, that's a, a hint. We yeah. have to yeah. so, Well, this comes out. Yeah. This will be... We're, so you can get a hoodie or a um, uh, yep. pants, and uh, the descriptions of the clothing, I think, is what's going uh, that's, that's <laughs> what's going to get sold. Help them sell. That's how we <laughs> that's describe cool. it. What, what, what could potentially happen while you wear this shirt is the selling point. Of yeah. the, the merch. So that's anyone it. listening, it's the seventeenth for them right now. So that's only four days away. So where should yeah, they go so to if, find this? You can go to pharaohamoose.com. P H A R O dot C O M. Wait, P H A R O. Oh, oh, no, it's not. Okay, okay. Delete everything yeah. I just said to you mentally. Or backspace, backspace, backspace. <laughs> go, go <ahead. laughs> do you want to do it? Yeah, I got okay, you. go it's ahead. P H A R O A M U S dot com. There you go, baby. Yeah. All right, that's what I was gonna say. No, but you said it better. <laughs> um, that is the website, the Pharaoh, and that is where the merch is up right now. So you can go see it and build a cart right now if you wanna. And on the twenty first, probably twenty second, you'll be able <laughs> to purchase the items. So if uh, if say I wanted to get my degree and set myself free, yeah. what <laughs> item would I purchase? You would want to get the National American University T-shirt. Okay, which isn't up there yet. No, 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 no. No, no you'd want to get the sweatshirt so you can be warm. While you're getting your degree, or, so you or, or the tank, because, or the tank, <laughs> or the tank, because who needs sleeves or anything? Well, else? I mean, that's how I'm setting myself free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so free of sleeves. <laughs> you want to be set free? You got to get the tank. It's designed for ladies, but we do have bigger sizes. So, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What is for ladies and what is for guys? Me and Justin are gonna get the tanks. We're gonna. Show I, I'm gonna, gonna show get the those. tank. <laughs> I'm gonna get the tank. <laughs> or is vinyl becoming a thing in the rap? We are thinking rap scene? about doing because vinyl. I've seen more and more. I, you know, I listen ninety percent of the time. It's rock and heavy metal and yep. metal. Yep. Vinyl has made a resurgence in, in those circles. Yep. Are, oh yeah. Is that? 
coming back in in the rap world not right? in, in, not the, in the mainstream but yes we want to do and, we've been wanting to do vinyl and, for about a year now and i would say yes and no i mean especially for those guys that are that are get really into there's a, obviously a lot of people that are really into the sound of vinyl they really really like the sound of yeah, vinyl over and, there. yeah and you know i i respect that i think that the uh uh, the other market that is really into it still is the DJ groups, and that's mm. still really prominent because that's kind of where a lot of that rap, hip hop, hip hop stuff comes yeah. from. Is you know breaking down the break beats, and so there's a lot of people that are still really into vinyl for for rap and hip hop for sure. So one of my favorite classes I ever took was a history of popular music from 1950 or 1949 to modern day. At this time, it was like 2010, but I remember seeing my professor showed a video that he took. On you know the big old shoulder camcorders. Nice. Of um, uh, those are the hardest to drop because how are you gonna drop something from up here? The doc, oh, really easy. The guy, you just like go. Oh, doctor, <laughs> something before Doctor right. doc, DJ. Was it Flash? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Of him, live show scratching records, wow. and he's got one headphone on listening to the record that he's playing. Or no, he's scratching on one, but he has the other vinyl queued up yep. and he's listening to it to yep. get to the point where he where wants he it, where he can start doing the thing. Now it's the like, computers do that for you. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And, but yeah. I'm like, God damn, that's a fucking it's artwork. Conning the temple that's, like, that's actually, that's one of the ways I started knocked. in this was that, was that in high school, that's one of the things I did was they, they did, we had classes on this and I went down like after school and we had a DJ professor or a DJ teacher sitting there teach us how to do all this stuff and central you, was awesome and you would literally do that you'd find the spot and find find a break spot in the beat and you'd listen to it and then you'd line it up on the other side and as soon as it's about to drop you'd flip it over so you could play the break on the other on the other one and then you just learn to move it back and forth so you just play the same break over and over and over and over and over again yeah wow. it's nuts Wait, so how long does actual vinyl last when you're doing that because uh it it, it does not last that long <laughs> i can i can tell you that one of the keys to being a good dj is when you find a record you really like you search for that same record you get about four or five copies of it <laughs> that, that you will absolutely scratch the crap out of that record and it won't play eventually yeah um but but you, you know you, you get a decent amount of time and then also a lot of the djs now go to the just the serato stuff where you don't even actually have a the records. Yeah, it's yeah. not an you actual just throw physical the record. File onto the it's device. on the computer, and you just yeah, yeah. yeah you just yeah, I've seen that. The, I think it's at like Guitar Center, where it looks like it looks you know, just like a record. It feels like it too. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's all MP3 yep. just plug in. Yep. All right. Well, and even like I guess is that tactile like the reason they made that control that way is for like the tactile the feedback. Feel. Yeah. Is, is is do you think that's gonna go away in like no. another generation nope. of DJs or? <sighs> I mean, for what I would say, I'd say probably not. Yeah. I mean, I think that it, it, for me at least, when I was trying to do it, that, and I'm not incredibly good at it by any means. I can do the very bare minimum. Um, but when you're when you're trying to find that spot, it's really hard to cue it up with precision if you don't have a decent turntable deck. Yeah. Okay. Because you got a physical eat, thing. Because because you got to imagine you're trying to find such a like people can notice the difference between the beat. Mm -hmm. Like if so, if a DJ drops it at the wrong spot for me, I hear it right away. Like, literally instantaneously, I go, the beat's not quite right. And so, you have to drop it dead on beat every single time. Yeah, and I wonder I wonder if, like, the, the digital, like, where it's not the actual vinyl uh, discs, what, I, vinyls, um, I wonder if that's, like, gives even the same sound, you know, in the long and, run. And, in and the you, end, like, you can do it now with, like, beat matching stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Like, computer... T well, yeah, yeah I mean, like, with, like, machine learning and stuff, yeah. like, it can find the beat and just drop yeah. it on the oh. beat. Yeah, you can do it now with the with that stuff. I I, I don't know. I, I think... I think it, it, but, plenty people like, the, the human element is such a big part of it. Yeah. Like, and, and I think the feel, too, when people find... Like, when you feel that feel for, like, cause, like the scratching and stuff will never be the same without the, without the physical tactile element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, like, the same thing goes with, like, a lot of things, like, photography, just, you know, that's what I do. Uh, when Wait, things... you do photography? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he just walked well, in off the street. No, no, no. I thought, oh, man, whoa. But, like, like, there's something about film where it's, like, the, the, the original medium is so much better than, like, the digital counterpart of it. Like, so... I'm curious if that like transfers over to that, where like the actual physical thing instead of the digital is like actually better. Well, I would say the the physical is better because when you take that away, you get you know Paris Hilton being booked as a DJ. 
air quotes on that one, doing shows. Yeah, but Gordon, it gives you hope to be a DJ. I No. <laughs> <laughs> I know my place. <laughs> I sell paint and paint accessories. Oh, propane, baby! <laughs> <laughs> you are Hank Hill. <laughs> oh, Featherton! <laughs> I, no, should, yeah. I should have just said King of the Hill when you said favorite Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Bill Gribble. Come on. I don't know, man. Government, Government doesn't know my real name. <laughs> wait, that's Boomhauer. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, wait, isn't Dale the government crazy alien? <laughs> yes. Do you remember when he almost found out that she was fucking John Redcorn and that's where his I No, from? but Boomhauer's wife was the one fucking John Redcorn. Uh, no, Dale's wife. Boomhauer has no wife. He's the bachelor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. got banjo yeah, and be yeah. like, hey, man, I don't know, I'm thinking of only them. I'm like, no, that's okay with me, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Boomhauer, I don't know a damn thing you would say, oh, but man. that's all right. I, my mic judge is way off then. Uh, I, need to, I, need to re, I need to re-watch the Beavis and Butthead and, and watch, some, uh, yeah, yep, watch and some, some of that. Paramount, hell, baby. Yeah. I don't have the Paramount. I might have to share my account with you. <laughs> if I do that, I, I think you'll bring me back next year. I'll trade sure. you. I, mean, I got Hulu. You got Paramount? I have Hulu, but I'll give you. I, I think I can have up to five people. <laughs> I'm, that's how me and this guy do it. We just get subscriptions for whichever one. I mean, this, this is a level have. of intimacy I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh, I noticed you were watching something that I haven't watched yet. We were supposed to watch it together. <laughs> it's under the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's always under the couch. <laughs> that, that's a show title if I've ever heard one. It's definitely under the couch. <laughs> so, the new album, yeah. you know, uh, to bring it back to actual music and such, mm-hmm. uh, Party in Maui, have you dropped anything else for yeah, that so I leading dropped, up to it? I dropped Wine and Dine, which is my first female right. featured artist. Um, Who do you got she, featured on there? I got Chioma on there. And she's amazing. She's she had in, the Twin Cities, or did yeah, she? Yeah, the show? Twin Cities. I went yeah. to church with her when we were growing up, actually. Yep. That's and it's kind of incredible that she that she turned it because honestly, she has one of the greatest voices I've heard, like in person, like live, actually, just sitting there in person. It's it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, she 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 knocked that song out of the park. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Yeah, it, I really liked it. I'm gonna check it out, and then uh, feel free to have her DM me about coming on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we'll definitely let her know. Yeah, she was like just doing, making a bunch of music, and I actually make music with her brother. Um, you know, church friends. You know, we all make music together. People that pray together make music together is the slogan <laughs> from the church. But um, so I was like, well, I need a female artist. But when you reach out to these female artists, they're just like, oh, this guy is in my DMs. You don't want to be in some ladies' DMs, apparently. <laughs> you, you cannot. Like, hi, do you want to make a song? <laughs> I, I Let's mean, make music. I think I'm saying, like, come to my studio. <laughs> I, so none of those were going to work. We weren't even going to shoot those shots. So I just reached out to family. Hey, Chioma, you want to hop in on a song with your Brody? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, sweet, this is the beat. This is what I'm thinking for it. These are the lyrics. What do you think? And she was like, this is wonderful. I can do this. So then we planned the time to, you know, because then that's like the most simple. When what are we actually going to do it? Got in the studio, laid it down, and it was amazing. So you guys are actually working together at the same time. Because yep. I've seen, you know, yeah, big you send it out to multi-album someone. band, you know, yeah. the big names that you know, everybody knows. It's like... You know, the drums are, you know, recorded this day, and then guitar, and then bass on these days, and blah, blah, and it just seems so disconnected. But yeah. you go back, you know, I remember watching, you know, Pink Floyd, the big one. You know, they actually, uh, what was it, uh, not, I can't remember which album, but with the one where they have a choir on there. They actually had a choir in studio, and they're playing along with it, and they're recording directly on vinyl. So you screw up, you got to start back at, you know, mm-hmm. square one again. So you guys are actually working together. We were actually in the room with the producer the day that he played the first couple of keys to the beat. I was like, yeah, I like this, you know? And then he, you know, threw some drums on there, and I'm like, yeah, you know? And then he threw on the, I don't know, he just was building the beat while I was there in the studio, and I came up with the chorus. Didn't write it down yet, you know, just voice note. Then when he sent me the beat, he finished. He was like, oh, I threw more of this stuff in there and blah, blah, blah. And I made it 20 minutes long. And it's like, oh, thanks. Sweet. Ah, Big Randy, one of my favorite producers. He actually did Space Cowboy. From yeah, the last, yeah, I remember yeah. you talking about last So, 
he did that. I did what I could do to it, but then I wanted someone else on this beat. Like, I couldn't do it on my own. And she just, oh, man, she was like, I can do this. I can be there Tuesday or Monday. I don't remember what day it was, but we got in the studio. We laid it down, sent her the rough of that to go listen to, and, you know, maybe she wants to record something. When we got back in the studio the second time, it was game over. We laid that song down like 15, maybe 20 minutes. So leading up to before he sends you the beat, did you have an idea that you wanted to have a no, feature on there or no, female? No, this, went this to his house. We're just listening to a bunch of beats, seeing what we can record, and that beat was played. And I was like, this is another one of those hits. Send me that. When he sent it to me and we laid it down, we were in the studio together, I heard me on this track, and I'm like, do you know what would good good on this song? If a female artist was supporting me, or I was supporting, or it was just a give and take situation. I think that, I'm like, well, who's a female artist? Oh, well, I can call my cousin, or you know, I can call my friend's cousin, or I could call Chioma, because she's getting crazy in the music, and she's doing shows all, she's busy with shows all the time. I wonder if she could make some time for us, get in the studio, see what we could do. And she was so down. She was like, dude, let's get in there right now. Send me the beat. Sent the tour the same day. She fell in love with it, sent me like a little thing that she wrote, and I'm like, okay, then we really got to make this happen. And, you know, people say, yeah, let's make it happen, blah, 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 but then they actually don't follow through. She said, I can be there Monday. Okay, I'll see you on Monday, you know? <laughs> she was there at 4 o'clock on time, right after work, and we laid it down. And I feel like to get at what you're kind of talking about a little bit, I think also we... In the in the past, we did more of our stuff, especially during COVID. That was kind of our our go to method. Yeah, if we're gonna work with other artists. Cut you off completely. Yeah. So last time you guys were here, it all started because Justin, who's been on the show many a times, who helped build what it is. You guys met. Yep. Getting and said he messaged me. I think the same night and said you have to have this guy on the podcast. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll check out the music. Oh, this is I, this is fucking sweet. Please come on the show. <laughs> but you talk about that you. You took COVID as an opportunity to just, I'm going to hammer in the music yep, yep, now. Yep, yep. So, and so just continue to build yeah. off of that? Yeah, yeah, now I'm like stuck in the music. I, I, it's really, I don't have a job, but it's like really hard to go look for a job and want to get back into the working when any second of the day could be, I have to talk to this other artist. I have to go meet these venue owners and see if I can, you know, judge up some kind of relationship with them to throw a show at their venue it's it's become so much of every day that i think i'm an artist forever now yeah <laughs> yeah and, and like just in terms of our workflow though i think we really like the the previous album we had we had like any features or anything that we did with other people we definitely were working with them remotely that we we were just in the studio just us for almost every single recording session and just trying to hammer it out that way this this next project had a lot more of actual collaboration in person yeah like which in the room felt so great yeah. honestly um i mean you know we i think we work really well well together as a team when we're doing recording stuff but to have other people in the room that could just give a little bit of input here or there or uh just bring other creative ideas to the table was really 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 nice do you think it's easier i mean looking back hindsight's always 2020 20. yeah has it been easier this time around than the first one for sure i i think i think certain parts of it i think the 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 life parts are a little bit harder now because just in terms of stuff going on in, in life there's more stuff going on so you know of, during... you mentioned you're you're planning a wedding now yeah which... yep, exactly that's you know on my yeah, table performing yeah. at the wedding right <laughs> yep yep you're performing at the wedding uh, right no, yeah. The, right after the cover band. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that covers all my songs. <laughs> they, they do it better. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was about to say. I'll admit they do it better. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, you know, there's. I think there's more life stuff going on now, which made that part maybe a little bit harder. But I think definitely in terms of like producing really high quality good stuff. We were able to do that a lot more consistently on this yeah, project we got because the bread and butter down. Yeah, because yeah. we just literally were able to work with the people we already knew we liked and able to just figure out it, like sit in a room with people and say this works, this doesn't work. I mean, all that stuff was just really key because in the previous projects it was always a telephone game. You know, do do we like this? What do you guys think? What do you not? You know, and then you have to wait a few days to hear back from people or whatever, which makes sense. I mean, you know, I can't expect people to necessarily message back right away, right. but. At the same time, what I do, I was gonna say, but is it, is it much nicer to sit in a room and be like, do we actually like this or not? 
and then you know move on from there. Do you do you feel you he you, like you get more gut reactions that way too instead of like well we're sitting on this and like I guess I kind of sort of like. Well, here's it. the yes. thing: like when someone like lays something down that I have a vision for this beat, you know, and I'm like, okay, so here's the chorus, here's my part, here's the bridge, here's your part, and then they do something that it's like good, but it's not the part, you know. It's easier when I'm sitting in the room and I can give them a look, like, and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if that's like, you know, then I don't have to say, yeah, I like it, but I hate that. Right, yeah, you don't, you don't have to compliment yeah, sandwich it. Yeah, yeah, like, I can like, just be like, bro, how about I change it up yeah, just, just a little just bit? Just like, go back in again, you're hot. Yeah, and then they'll just again. Yeah. automatically record again, which then, then you can like, it's a fun thing, you're, it's okay, man, hit it again. Hit it, you know, we'll do this all night, we'll do this all, do you want another shot? Some tequila for you? Bring us some tequila, baby. Let's go. It's under the couch. Tequila is under the couch. Jesus Christ, she's bringing the tequila. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's more fun to do that than it is to like call them and say, I like that part, but can you go back in the studio? And I don't know where they go and record, you know? Yeah. But when they're at my house, it's unlimited studio it's, time. There's no, you're not paying per hour. Yeah. There's none of these stigmas that would... It's, Originally. It's also really hard too because you're you're working with people on creative projects yeah. and creative people are naturally really sensitive about the mm -hmm. stuff you work on creatively. Mm -hmm. And I get that. I'm the same way. I don't love to work on something creatively for a couple hours and then find come back to show people and they're like, eh. You know, that's not very much fun. But if you're all in the flow at the same time, like... Exactly. And, and then, then you don't have to have that moment other. of like trying to like... I don't like it. Uh, and, and usually the part I don't like is like the smallest yeah. section of the thing, oh you know, we, we just need to change this one little thing, but it, it can come across really harsh when you're suddenly sending it via mm -hmm. message or something like that, whereas in person... Where there's no emotion behind yeah. it either, like, it's just, te yep. like, hard text. Yep. And... But in person, it's so easy, you're just literally like, let's just change that real quick, and then everybody's like, oh, yeah, definitely, it sounds yeah. way better My favorite now. Like, thing I is, really, you know, I think you can do that again, go back yep. in. So if I have a hundred recordings of one person doing that part a hundred times, I'll listen to it later and be like, I think he did really good. And then we'll cut it. We'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll cut this one. Yep. Cut that one. Magic and then of editing. And be like, did I leave that out? <laughs> yeah, baby, that was all you, man. <laughs> oh, I stayed up four hours cutting this guy up. <laughs> Do you, is it hard to manage? I mean, whenever you get, I think you get someone creative or an artist in any, any field, there's an ego in there. Yep. Yeah. Is it difficult to manage that? I'd say what's harder to manage than the ego is their time. Like, people feel like, okay, so the goal that I am doing is to become very well known and do shows with like Katy Perry and, you know, anyone else. These people that I'm doing music with now, they don't have those goals. They're, they're just like, whatever, we're just making a song. So when I'm like, I need, a, I need this song done by Tuesday because, you know, ABC, they're just like, I, I mean, whatever it's just a song for me we'll get it down when we get it yeah done. you know they have no urgency they don't see the love in it they're just like i mean it's my first song i've ever recorded i mean thanks for recording me for free at your house but like why should i be grateful and then they go home it's like god <laughs> this is just how humans are though you know some have the love and the drive and the passion mm -hmm. some have talent that they don't know what to do with and they just want to keep working at best buy because i mean the job is great it's best buy you can get like a plus drive for like seven dollars like, <laughs> like what what's better than that <laughs> there's exactly nothing to, i mean it's unlimited flash drives so i see you know there where their priorities are but i just prioritize the 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 music, you know, I care so much about the recording, and a lot of people that I'm working with now don't. Like, they got to be there on Tuesday to get in the studio. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm running late, and I'm just sitting at the computer like, oh, it's it's okay. Why are you late though? Oh, you know, I decided to grab another drink with my brother. Oh, so we're just drinking with your brother. Are you gonna be here soon? Yeah, whatever, I'll be there when I can be there. Oh, okay, I'll just continue to sit. Yeah, so he drives me crazy, but I don't show it. Yeah, you know. I try to make it fun when people come over, but it's very important to me. Well, and Ferret, you mentioned you you're doing this full time now. Yeah. Jake, are you working in Elios or Elio or Elios? Ilya. Ilya. Sorry. God Il damn it. Ilya. <laughs> yeah. We'll edit that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. No, no, it, your, your fuck up is in. Ilya. <laughs> Ilya. Yeah. I mean, are you guys doing this? Are are you in your own field? I know Jake, you're more on the production side of the house, and Ilya, you're on the photography. Is this yep. your full time gig, or are you? 
working no. a nine to five and this is the fun thing. No, I have a yeah, I have a I have a job and I also have school, so I can't you know I have other dedications. Um, but I do spend a lot of my time with Pharaoh and a lot of it, you know, taking pictures and having meetings and and, and figuring out the visual stuff and also you know make working on some music videos and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, I I do have like a job job. I have a question. Are you going to set yourself free and get a degree? (laughs) (laughs) Not with those sleeves, it's not. (laughs) National American University. He doesn't know what we're talking about. I know. It's before his time. I know. I have no idea what you're talking about. You guys are talking about time over cable from ancient (laughs) You've got mail. Oh, Oh, my God. It's that same era, man. Singular. Like. That's all I have to say. Singular. But I, I guess for me, yeah, this is this is pretty much my full time gig. Uh, is working with working with music stuff. I mean, we definitely I, I, we talked about this a little bit on the previous show, but we definitely are doing some crypto stuff too, which takes up some of my time. Um, you know, we dabble in that and try to make a little money here and there. But uh, for the most part, this is this is the majority of the stuff that I focus my time on. Do you, either of you guys catch flack from friends and family? Like, I, you know, a lot of my guests, you know, this started off just as a hobby turned passion turned career. But mm-hmm. during that hobby and passion period, right, what are you doing? A lot of family, your time? yeah, you know, mom and dad going, "Hey, when are you guys gonna? That's cool. And oh, you made a song. Good job. Uh, when are you gonna get a job and move out of my effing basement?" Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, not really, and if they did, fuck them. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, but, there's no <laughs> such thing as a story that starts from, like, you know, the end to where you are now. Yeah. It, everything has a beginning, you know? So Absolutely. So, this is the beginning, still. Like, it's, I'm not going to count it as, like, the middle or quarter way through, because yeah. it's not. It's still... I, I learn stuff every day. Well, there, there's always going to be somewhere to, to go. There's always yeah. going to be a new goal. Yeah, yeah. So if my mom thinks it's funny, which she doesn't, she <laughs> knows I am wasting a lot of my time into this, so it better become something for me. Um, which, that's all mothers, you know. Yeah. They just, they're just Moms. like, yeah, why don't you just yeah. get a computer science degree and work for the Delta? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. It's a good it's a good career path, you know. Yeah. It's study money. <laughs> and you are a real adult, you know? But I was just like, nah, I'm gonna go hang out and do music with my friends. And she was like, Oh my god. But yeah, no, I don't think I'll ever hit the, you know, end of this journey. But that's what makes it fun is that Every artist that's ever anywhere now has a journey. You know, they, they started somewhere where they're like, yeah, I used to log around my piano playing at the mall, or I used to sleep on my friend's couches or whatever. I've never logged around a piano. I don't have to play piano, but I have slept on friends' couches, I slept in cars, I slept in a park, and not doing music at the park. But, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, I could have gotten a job at Target, but I yeah. just wanted to sit around and freestyle and get better at my art. What do you mean you've had the job at Target? <laughs> Everybody has a job at Target. They're a good company until they fire you almost three months in when you're about to get your benefits and become like a legitimate, you know, employee. But that's a story for next Really, week. they're just helping artists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of those promotional jobs. <laughs> we'll keep you around right before your benefits and then we'll let you go. You don't want benefits, do you? Nah, I'm an artist. I'm going to struggle. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> No, so. I, I can't remember, I was listening to another show and they talked about the myth of the overnight success and how that's thing. not a real thing. Because yeah. mm-hmm. what you see, you know, you see the Katy Perry's, the, the Kesha's, the mm-hmm. whoever, mm-hmm. Yeah. they had that success and bam, they're up at yep. the top mm-hmm. of the food chain. Mm-hmm. But what social media and the media don't show... Is everything in between. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, you know, that... Yeah however many it could be a year or 10 years oh, of them and busting and their ass to get to that point like, even people that release their like first project and their first project booms they they put a lot of work into that first project like there's no chance that you that you come out with like a hot album or like a hot thing and you did it on one day it yeah just, there's it, no way it, it's literally impossible you can't record that much in one day that's all good you can't do it and so, so the idea that anybody came up like overnight is ridiculous. You had you had to have put in at least six months, you know, some amount of time to have have had any success. There's no way. 
So, I mean, is there... Is there a way to measure measure success in the music industry? I mean, yeah, you know, there's the yeah, Grammy out there. Yeah, yeah. Gra- I mean, Grammys awards. Yeah, and I was just talking to, uh, when I was talking to Miles Boulevard, which would be on last week's episode. His he knew or he felt like yes, I've made it when he was able to pay rent for the first time just off his music. I mean, is that a decent? You know, I guess that measurement. would be amazing because I'm paying twenty five hundred dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> so I made that much money off of my music to pay for that. I would kiss the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I kiss a Gordon. It'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Casey, we'll get you a step stool. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that would be great. Like, yeah, I. And honestly, we don't like focus on the ways to take what I'm doing now to right now make me money. If we made money, we'd throw it right back into the music. Well, so how do you guys measure, like, so for you mm. personally, like, what is your measurement of success then? Like, it would be more than paying my rent. Well, well, well no, but like I, not, not necessarily. Oh, you're talking about just in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah just in general. I kind of disagree. I, th- I think our measurement for success is definitely the, we, we like to look at our numbers of like how we're reaching people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, audience. Yeah, well, like be... our audience size is definitely the biggest thing that we use to measure our success and whether or not we had like good album releases or not. Okay. Is, is are we getting are are people interested in this? Are they listening to it? Are they streaming it? Are they are they engaged that way? So is the philosophy more like, uh, I mean, kind of like a feel the dreams thing? Like if we build it, they will come. Yeah. Like, yes. People are listening to it, then like the money's gonna come down the road. Exactly. But we need to, like exactly. we need to build this. I don't. Up. I don't need a little bit of money now. I don't need a little bit of money tomorrow. I need to be making music with people that I've always looked up to. Right. That would be amazing yeah. if I could get in the studio with and, like Akon or like you know P Diddy or those are just and, normal people. And definitely don't get me time. wrong <laughs> with this comment because we're we're definitely trying to be as 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 profitable and right. want, yeah, we I mean, want yeah, everybody's possible. trying to make money. We but... want it we want to do it so that we can we can do this as a career. We don't want to, you know, that's yeah. what we're trying to do, but uh, at the same time like I definitely think the main priority for us is making stuff that we think really resonates with other people. Well, is it important? It's also very important not to lose like sight of that goal too. Exactly. Because yeah. then you lose like the heart, the of... drive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's it's really easy to sit in the studio and be like, "This is what we think might be a good song," but it's also it's it's a totally different thing to like come it's up what with. We a... know it's going to yeah. be good. Yeah, like this actually is just good music. Like we just enjoy listening to this for the sake of listening to it. Do you? I mean, do you worry about that? You know, because what. I consider good music could be different than what oh, Casey yeah. considers good music. Oh, this right, is I mean, the fun part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when I have people come over to my house for like a listening party or whatever, which I do almost every Tuesday, is um, people will always say, oh, I really like this song. You should make more music that sounds like this. And I'm like, really good. That's good feedback. But my mother didn't say that to this song. <laughs> Neither did Jake or my <laughs> photographer or my girlfriend. They all said... Another song was their favorite song, and that's what I should make more of. So that's good. If I can have an album where there's 12 people in the room, and every person in the room has a favorite song on the album, I feel like I did good. Because usually yeah. when you hear an album today, the first song sounds like the second song, sounds like the third song, sounds like the fourth song, and maybe the fifth song is a little different. I don't like that at all you where you know? have ween where their entire uh discography sounds the same yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that so, so when they tell me make more music like this i can't just cater to you i'm so happy you like this song thank you so much that's what i need but i need everyone else to find a song on this album that they also like because it's not just about you dj it's about everyone else too you know because their favorite song is not my favorite song it's not his favorite song it's not your favorite song and, and frankly, I don't know if this is actually the best business strategy. Um, if I'm being 100% honest, I definitely, I, I think that there might be more like actual, that there's there's probably a reason why more people make albums that sound so homogenous throughout mm. the entire album, mm. you know? And, uh, but, They're trying to sell a sound, a specific sound, you but, know? But definitely our, our theory is that if you put a bunch of different stuff on an album, you find stuff that somebody's going to find something they like. You know, that if you're listening to the entire, if you listen to, to the entire album, you'll hear multiple even, like, genres, I would say, of music. You, like, you, it's not even just within one specific genre. Like, some of it's more pop, some of it's more, like, strictly hip-hop, some of it's maybe even a little bit, like, more yeah, Afro-pop style. This, this next oh, album, yeah. there's a full band. Is that what the hat's for? Or? Yeah, there's a whole, just all straight, <laughs> you've heard it, straight banjo. What? Straight 
Yep. I don't want to give hear, too much did, away. Uh, did I hear that? Yes. I feel like you have. Uh, okay. yes. But if you it's haven't, listen, yeah. well, listen to it in the car. See, I let's thought you were wearing the cowboy hat because last time you guys were here, I don't know if it was on air or not, but Space Cowboy. Space Cowboy. That yeah. was the song that I, I when I just mentioned you, Yeah. And I'm like, cool. And I just hit shuffle on on Spotify, mm. and all of a sudden, Space Cowboy starts playing. I'm like, this sounds like nothing else out there that I've heard on the market. Exactly. This is awesome. And it doesn't sound like the old album either. Like the, yeah. the old album has a bunch of different kind of songs on it, you know? Yeah. Well, and yeah, as an artist, you're also gonna like evolve a lot too. Yep. You're gonna discover like different parts about what you like and how you like to work and the sound that you like. Do you want to know my favorite thing dog is, though? Dog is pissed. <laughs> is that the dog? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. My favorite thing about this is, so, when I do a show, right, and I think I'm like, I just lost everything I was going to say. I don't even remember what I was going to say. But I'm just going to say this. When I do a show in the future, I want everyone in the audience to hear their favorite song. And that's if I do one album. You know? So if I do one entire album, everyone in that room is going to be like, yep, that's the one I was waiting for right there. And they're not all going to be like, do that one song that we all like. I mean, there's going to be, you know. Play Tree Bird! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you go to like a show for like, you know, like people, usually there's that one song that everyone wants to hear and we don't really care about any of the other ones. So they'll do that song four times that night and, you know, open with it, close out with it. I want to be able to do the whole catalog and they're just like yeah all this stuff is music that we like oh he's playing my favorite now he's playing this is the one so yeah i, it's, I don't want to be that artist that always does that one song every time i do a show and the only way to stay away from that is to do country <laughs> slow songs fast songs songs about girls songs about guys i don't know <laughs> My friends, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not those kind of guys, guys. Come on now. Um, yeah, so just try to cover everything I can, and it's not hard for me. Like I want, I'm the kind of artist that like, well, can you do this kind of song? Yeah, yep, yes, I can. Very comfortable with it. Yeah, it doesn't feel weird if I'm singing or if I'm, you know, talking about God or talking about drugs. I don't care. Whatever. Like I'm creative. Like nothing is like a boundary to me, and I like that. So I would love to do a song with like an Indian artist from India that's like all like. You know, Dasi, I would love that. Full country, I would yeah. love that. Like, Native American music with the flute and the drums, I would love that. That's the kind of artist I want to be. I don't just want to be like, oh, he's a rapper or what. No, I just want to be a, an artist. artist. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's one of the hardest things that we have when iTunes is like... Yeah, like, they're like, well, what is, who are you? Yeah. What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, can you tell them... <laughs> Can you tell them we're weird? Yeah. Is weird yeah. one of them? Oh, it's not. Damn it. Send them another email telling them we need weird to be a genre. Yeah. Uh, question from the chat asking if any of us can play a song on request on guitar, which I don't think... I was just not going to read that one. Well, no. <laughs> I, I don't, no. There's not a guitar here. We can't do it. But, I mean, have you ever thought of put, putting maybe a rock element of some kind? Oh, yeah. What, were, what was the thing that we're, we're going to do? Um, what's, what's that? Ever Levine. Ever Levine? Avril Lavigne. Avril, Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. <laughs> <laughs> that ever loving one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking Everlast what for genre, a second. What genre does she do? Pop rock? Yeah, sure. Punk? Yeah, punk, yeah, punk, 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 punk rock. Punk, punk, punk pop. pop. Yeah. yeah. Love that stuff. Yeah. That's what you grew up with, you know? Like Reliant K, uh, Plain White Tees. Well, I guess they're not pop rock. They're more like, I don't know, regular rock. Punk, but sure. Punkish. But I get I, what you're going. I, I would. They're punkish. <laughs> it, it was, if I could get it a was band, top forty punk. Yeah. If I could get that's, a band that, together, so that's a problem. For yeah. me. There should not be a top forty you, punk. You just said an oxymoron here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I mean, at that time, that's what sold. And true, true, true. Make hay true. when the sun shines. I, I guess Wait, so this person wants to hear guitar. Yeah. 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 Well, they're just asking if any of us can play a song on request, in which that um, would be crazy. They should yeah. wait for this album that's coming out. It's going to yeah. be a full banjo version of one of my songs, maybe. That's awesome. All right, yeah. so uh, you, you heard that here first. Uh, 2023, in studio, uh, Pharaoh's going to have a banjo, and it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Yep. It'd be kind of, <laughs> you got the space down here. I have friends oh, that play banjo. Oh, I yeah, can bring a whole... <laughs> Legitimately, I, I, I would, would actually have a ton Dave, of fun. Dave, Andrew, we'll <laughs> jam out right here. The banjo part, for that'd sure. Be a lot, that'd be a lot of fun. We can... I mean, it would have to be, you know, 
you have to break the year tradition. <laughs> well, I mean, we can do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but between halfway year mark or something. Well, I mean, we, we could have you here like when the weather's nice right. and like, the pool's open. But it doesn't have to be a blood moon, right? It has to be a blood moon or something. <laughs> I don't know why you keep inviting me in the snow. <laughs> well, you guys have some problem with hanging out with me or something? Hey, Come hey, on, man. You reached out to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking June, July. It's nice out. There's the pool. Party yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Have a good time. <laughs> well, we really didn't know what month we were going to be in Africa. So we knew we were going to drop the album in spring. But were we going to be in Africa before the album drops? Or like, you know, but we need to have people know about the album before yeah. we drop it, before we leave yeah. town. But funny anecdote so, about that, actually. His, uh, his girlfriend had, she booked the tickets for us. And she was trying to, we were trying to work on the dates. And she... She told us we we're going to be there April something, like it was like April 20th or something like that. And we're like, sweet! And we're like, awesome, okay, cool. That all works. She, she comes back and she sends us the dates for the tickets. So and it March, was, <laughs> March 8th? March, March 8th, something like that. It was like two days from when we were talking about it. And I, we're like, that's not going to work. <laughs> She's like, why? We have to, where's the dog going to, like, what are you, it's under the couch! <laughs> Go under the couch! <laughs> And I'll talk to you later. I can't, I, you know, honestly, I can't wait for that song on the next album. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can hear it, dude. It's under the couch. It'll <laughs> sound just like a lonely island's dick in a box. Yeah. Yeah. It's under the couch. All of it is under the couch. <laughs> God. I forgot the question, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so what was it? We lost the question a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, uh, a rock element in a yes, song. Yes, yeah. I would. I, I don't know if you want to take this one up, but we have been planning to do a whole album where I have no restrictions. So, not even an album. It's going to be like a mixtape. Oh, that's the word, right, Jake? Yep. Mixtape. So yep. this mixtape is going to have... We're not going to be trying to put this on every, you know, platform because we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to be able to just put this on every free platform so I can be as creative as I want to be. You know, so that's what we're gonna do. Like, yeah, there's oh. there's a number of cover songs <sighs> and other things that he's been interested in doing for quite a while that he's he's been wanting to work on, and we've been kind of limiting ourselves that way because we wanted to be able to put it out on iTunes, we wanted to be able to put it out everywhere, do all the paperwork and, part, uh, you know. And so, yeah, now we're we're gonna release something that's gonna have really Everything. no creative restrictions on it. I mean, it, and that's where that's gonna come yeah, from. How, I can't how wait does for the cover cassette. songs work? Because I know if so you don't make the, money on it, you don't have to pay nobody a dime. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's well, how it works. Well, so I, when I was talking to Miles, he mentioned you know his newest album. I'm like, he, he's talking about. It. I'm like, hey, I can't find it on Spotify. Am I blind or what's going on? He said no because I leased the the beats to it yeah i don't own them so i can't put it on yep. spotify because it's a paid for platform yep so how does it with a cover song how does that it's work the same out? concept well it, it's actually it's, it is a little bit different technically you can put cover songs up on itunes that is a thing that we could do if we were just strictly going for covers there's a couple of the re, part of the reason why we're doing the same is that there's a, there's a number of songs that we're going to do kind of like that where we're going to lease them and not actually own all the rights to the beats because some of the beats that we want to work on are really expensive beats. Yeah, or they just um, have crazy or, stipulations. Or they have like, crazy I want one hundred percent of the publishing right. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Frankly, that's one of the toughest things right now in a lot of the rap stuff is that the people that make the beats are are asking for what I would consider to be probably too lead. large a portion of the pie. They want both the hundred percent of the publishing rights and fifty percent of the writer share. Which means that essentially they're asking for out of a two hundred percent pot, they're asking for one hundred fifty percent of it. Which means that as the artist that actually and they want you it, to pay up front for the beat. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and they, the and, and they want you to pay usually at least a couple hundred bucks up front for the beat to work on it at all. And so you're basically essentially saying that you're going to make the majority of the song because the the lyrics and the melody and a lot of those. I mean, that, that's a lot of the musicianship that goes into making the music. And they're going to ask for most of the profits that you could theoretically make off of it. So uh, definitely the way that, and, and that's and that's honestly the standard lease that they set up in most of the beat uh, selling websites. So on your, I don't know, what, just what, drop what, a name, beat, yeah, stars. beat stars. Exactly on beat stars when you go and put a beat up on there, that's just the natural contract that yeah. they have written up already. They're like, it's you insane. want all the money and everything in their house. 
and you're like, and, yeah, give me their house, yeah, baby. And I, and I was gonna say, and I get it as as a beat maker, you go on I the mean, beat, I would right? Love and, to have a house. And you just made it, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's living in his basement. I would love to have another house. <laughs> <laughs> but but I get it. You know, you go on, you made this nice beat. You're really happy with the work that you did, and then you go on, and then the first contract that it says is, do you want to make all the money? And you say yes. Yes, I want to make all the money. I yeah. just made this sick beat. Of course I do. Yeah. But realistically, to get artists to work with you, what makes a lot more sense is at least give them the 100% of the songwriter share. I mean, yeah, that, that just makes sense to me. But So we're going all off rails with this one. Yeah. I'm going to do... I'm going to do crazy meditating music. I'm going to do Mario Judah screaming at the top of my lungs music. Um, I just want to do everything I've ever wanted to do on this mixtape so we're gonna have probably 30 40 songs of just me doing whatever comes to mind and they're all gonna be nicely mixed and master baby because that's pharaoh and musa shmiel if it doesn't sound good you won't get to hear it <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah so it's gonna be it's gonna sound good i'm not saying i'm yeah. rushing this work but i'm giving myself no restrictions it's, it's a pure passion yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, it, uh, you'll have to find it because it won't be on iTunes or, you know, um, Spotify or Amazon Music or maybe even YouTube. It might, it might be on YouTube. Yeah, we'll but it, SoundCloud is where I'm going to put it in all the mixtape websites. And I'll have CDs that I'm going to give people for free. Yeah. Yep. All right. So now that you have the address for the studio, you know, we're just going to a couple <laughs> copies. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I will give you guys some copies you can give to Actually, we just want them on cassette, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> can you put those on 8-track? Oh, that would be crazy. I mean, it's a mixtape. Like, wow. if, if it's a mixtape, like, I feel like it has to be on a cassette. Like, <laughs> oh. It should be on a tape. Okay. We should like, no, guys, I'm serious. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> That'd be I'm, I'm cool. talking literally really cassette cool. tapes. I'll do one copy for you, and you'll play it back in a cassette tape player. And, you're and you'll be like, like I hate it. Like you, say yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> you think that, but I grew up listening to Akon on the cassette, recording it off the street oh. radio, baby. Oh, I know. We all did. I know. Him yeah. and Eminem, baby. Come There's on. A, well, and then remember, like, you would you would put the cass- uh, like your thing up against the radio to record it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 You have to. like this song, okay? <laughs> And you know, if you hold it here, it sounds better than when you hold it here. Yep. You gotta but, find but, that spot. But you're only getting, like, one channel. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and after you record it, you realize, shoot, I recorded over something else I really like. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that other song, though. <laughs> See, that, that could be your thing, you know? If people come to your show, at the door, you just hand them a cassette tape. Yeah. Like, now you gotta go buy hey, a cassette player. Hey, thanks for coming. That, that, and that then right around the corner, we sell cassette players, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's actually not a terrible idea because I bet they're about ten pence, ten cents to produce or something. Right. Yeah. 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 At the very least, you know, the, you know. Somebody you're like, oh, cool! I got a cassette tape. Cool. Throw it in their car. Six months later, when it's warm again, they're going through cleaning stuff out. Like, what the fuck? I have a cassette. Tape. <laughs> oh, that's right. I was at that Fur yeah. Moose show. And I think I, think I, I should sign this one. Yeah. To my loving customer, first edition, only copy in existence. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of it. But so moving forward here. What's uh, Africa comes back? New albums dropping. Mm. You know things are mostly back to normal ish now. Live shows are starting to come back, especially in the Twin Cities. I got my I've got like five shows coming up here in a couple months. <laughs> What's the game plan? You guys want to do live shows? Venues lined up around here. I do, do want to do live shows, but I'm saving all of my energy for when I leave town because I've exerted a lot of my energy in town, and. What I've gotten back from other local artists is not what I've been trying to put out to other local artists. Like, they're very close, all about themselves. And so I'll promote anyone that I like their music. I'll, you know, be like, oh, I actually like this. Promote this. I'll tell my social media manager lady, look, I need this guy promoted a lot more. I actually like this song. They're not returning those kind of favors. I don't think they listen to my music or whatever. But I listen to the competition in town. And I like their music, you know, and I try to reach out to them and work with them, you know, hey, I'm, you know, and I'm not getting that back. So I'm not going to waste any more of my yeah. time with people that are not trying to, you know, reciprocate what I'm trying to give them, you know. So I'm just going to take all of my energy and talent and do whatever I can to show the motherland what I've been doing since I've been gone, you know, to see if they're going to 
Well, and, you know, and you're also vibe not, with it more. We we are probably gonna have at least one listening party before we leave. Yes, yeah, so I'll definitely do a listening party. Yeah, but yeah, I'm we're probably gonna have. I'm done trying to do shows, trying to get on people's rosters. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the local a lot of the local scene is definitely based around a few different groups that put on shows pretty regularly, and uh, it's not what you know, but more who you know. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, exactly. yeah. It's definitely a lot of that, and I I would say that it's uh it's. It, a lot of it, honestly, doesn't particularly match up genre-wise right. with what we've been putting out. I mean, there's there's a lot of really hardcore hip-hop. There's a lot of, like, backpack rap. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's that's got its own vibe and feel to it. But it's not. It's 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 definitely not as poppy as we tend to be. Yeah, it's a lot of those, you play this album and you played one long song yeah. type of shows. So when I'm going to, if I'm going to do a show at one of those shows, well, then I go on and it's like... Oh, this is completely different. This is not what we're expecting at See, all. And I like that. As some, uh, yeah. like, I list all sorts of different genres. Yeah. Like, I was just at a metal show last fall in Chicago, and it's pretty much straight metal. But in the middle, all of a sudden, this guy comes up wearing, I think it was a Hank Williams shirt, starts singing like uh, 80s pop style music. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is good, but <laughs> what? <laughs> Talk about whiplash. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I bumped into him later on at, at the end of the night. I go, hey, man, uh, awesome set, but why? <laughs> he goes, well, oh, you know, this is, you know, I actually know the people in these bands, blah, blah, blah. And they had a spot open up. We were both recording in Tennessee. And they said, hey, do you want to come play a show? And he's like, ha, ha, cool, that's funny. I'm like, no, do you, do you want to come play? <laughs> and the crowd went nuts as soon as they, like, I think he, I can't remember any of these songs he did now. It's like, that's fucking cool. I like that. Right? When, because you if you a little yeah. flair in there is not that bad. Yeah, if but I go they, to a music festival like or a concert and there's 10 bands playing, if they all sound the same, it's like, eh, whatever. Right. Cool. The, the hip hop crowds, I think, are really specific in that way. Uh, I mean, I, obviously, you know, I don't want to generalize too much because I'm sure there are plenty that are that are in for whatever happens at a show. You know, they're down for something different. But a lot of the people, like, if they're very into like backpack style rap, they're gonna be dis or they're gonna they're gonna try to be um, um, they're gonna be frustrated yeah. with with the, when you. What I get a lot is, I like your music, yeah, but I don't know if that's rap. I never yeah. said it was. Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of, we get a lot of that, or yeah. like you know maybe the you know I, I I like your songs, but the bars could go harder, you know. <laughs> it's like, I, do you want me to talk about running around doing cocaine and shooting babies, <laughs> <laughs> or should I be running around shooting babies doing guns? I don't know. I, I mean, it depends if you're going for a Republican or a Democrat. That's true. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I have to read the room next. <laughs> So, I mean, what genre would you say you fit into, or genres? Because I you know, when I've had you on the show, yeah, in the in the show notes, I'd say I'd say rap, hip hop artist, right? Pharrell yeah. Moose. Yeah. I mean, I'm going for pop star now. Yep. Yeah. Just gonna fully embrace the pop star. The new Katy Perry. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going for Katy Perry. And, and, and Katy Madonna. I, I think you need to grow the hair out a little bit. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> so, so you know how you were saying this whole thing about hot girls. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think I think at, at some point we did kind of decide that it might be better to just say just pop generally, mostly because pop has become such a fluid term these yeah. days. Yeah. I mean. So much of pop music is really like hip hop, or but also like or you know, techno. It's, it's got so many influences already into it. When you talk about what pop music is, that we're just like, I mean, I guess we're pop, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you know. We're definitely popular style, which, which makes somewhat, it hard when you're like, yeah, I'm yeah. a pop star. They're like, well, this is a rap show. Yeah, this one so sounds like. I don't trap. think you can get in on this uh, roster. And I'm yeah. just like, no problem. Yeah, and we'll go hang with it's, my friends. And, and it's also <laughs> funny too because it's kind of like you know I'm, I know you guys are kind of more into like metal or like have a little bit more familiarity with that type of scene. And it's a little bit like somebody saying you know you can't play punk at a metal show or something. It's like I mean yeah it's technically not the same thing I guess, but it's like it's pretty you know it's definitely still hardcore guitar and mm -hmm. like you know you yeah. still it's and, instrument based. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you're like okay well you know how is that that different? And it's kind of the same thing. It's same like thing. wordplay yeah. and beats. You know what's we're, the problem? Yeah, and, and you're gonna get the gatekeepers I think in at any and yeah, yeah. problem yeah exactly and, yeah. And, it, and I saw somebody saying, oh, this band isn't metalcore. If you look up yeah. the dictionary, you're like, shut up. Yeah. Right? Is, it, is, it, is it good? Yes, great. Yeah. Moving yes, on. Great. Yes, I like it. It's like Slipknot, wrote, Slipknot is doing their um, Knotfest Roadshow, 
and they're doing with Cypress Hill is yeah. on the second half of it. It's like, <laughs> that's not metal. Are nope. they good? Yes. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would, would I be happy to see them at the show together? Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds and great. I've seen Tech 9 has done shows with Slipknot before. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. Like, well, they did not fuss out in California. There's like 30 fucking bands. They're all true metal band, you know, true air quotes, metal bands. Yeah. And then Tech Nine smack dab in the middle yep. of that. I'm like, and I'm reading the roster, and I'm like, what the fuck? People still love that. That's awesome. But One yeah. of these is not How? like the other. <laughs> yeah. But Tech Nine's very heavy instrument based too on his song, yeah. so easy. To no, and I think that kind of shit is awesome. Well, yeah. Also, yeah. like you're you're now like pushing toward people towards like a different genre that they may not have exposed themselves right. to. And yeah. so it's like, yeah, I don't know, you're pushing him another yeah, way, yeah. I don't and, want to do and that. And I'm frankly a big fan of genreless music. In, like, in, yeah. in the sense that yeah. I, I don't think you need to define yourselves by what, right. you know, if you have a song and it starts off as one thing, but in the middle, you know, it sounds like you want to switch up and be something totally different, I have no problem with that. I think that's really cool if you can find a way to do it that works, like, effectively and mm-hmm. sounds really cool sonically, you know? And so... I, I, I'm a big fan of that. I think I think genreless music is definitely the wave and the, the way that people are moving in the future, you know? Well, mm-hmm. especially, like, with, with, like, Spotify and stuff, the way we're consuming music is we're not consuming it by album anymore. Yeah. Right. Where it's it's all piecemeal. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, we're just we're grabbing a song here, grabbing a song there, and, like, or just, like, throwing things on so shuffle. It's, so yep. it, it helps a lot that I'm not trying to build my albums to be, like, one long song, you know? <laughs> like, I, honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah like... Because you'll pop up in a lot more different playlists exactly. that way. Exactly. I, I, I think there might be a time and place for those kind of albums. Oh, sure. well, and then, when you want to get into that though. zone, yeah. You know, yeah, sure. when and you're like, this is what I want to like, I want this, this is, the, then you yeah. can make a whole playlist of that guy's songs that, you know, right. you know, yeah. meet what you want to hear. You know, back in the 60s, 70s, progressive rock, prog rock was popular. At, in I mean, points Rush still is still today. popular because yeah. it's never <laughs> well, going to go out My favorite style, was, but... uh, I can't think of his name now, lead singer and Jethro, not, not Jethro Tull, um, uh, pop, no, yeah, Jethro Tull, they did Aqualung. Right? The album Lockwell? You're not helping. You're not. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> but they did an album, and the the media at the time said, well, this is progressive rock. And he read the reviews and was like, yeah, fuck you. You think that's progressive? And they put out Aqualung. <laughs> and like, this is progressive rock, you idiots. And, yeah. you, know, and, you know, so, yeah. I think, like I said, there's a time and place for it. Yeah. But I... Really, I I think it's like, you know, like the show here. I just talk to whoever I think would be cool. Right. And, and for you... Do what you want. I try, man. And I, I go to these shows with this get up on, and I'm just like, whose moms is here? Who can become a new fan of mine? <laughs> and they're just like, you're weird. You look funny. What's going on with you? And I'm like, oh, my name is Farah Moose, baby. What's going on? <laughs> and, the, you know, I feel like other artists don't have that. They just, like, walk in the room, head down, you know, trying to keep their mind focused on their performance or, you know, what what whatever it is. And... I don't have that stress, you know. I, I don't carry myself that way. I just, I, I, I just have fun, you know. When the show it's time for me to go on stage, it's not as any different from when I was just talking to this person. Except now I have a mic. I'm talking to everyone, so I, I just carry myself like I'm ready for this. This is gonna be so fun. No stress. I'm not saying I'm not human and I don't get stressed out and these. I, I. I have to work yeah. past that, like. But you, you know, you are definitely right that you 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 perform whether or not you're performing or not. Yeah, like I walk <laughs> into the room like, let's go, baby, yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, I don't ever want to see this guy in another one of my shows. He's spilling all the juice. <laughs> I mean, my mother's telling me she's gonna download this album, you know. And I just want to work with people. Like, if I could, if I could come to your show and do that, don't you want to do more of that with me? Don't you want to do more shows? Don't you? Don't you want to become as selfless and not giving a fuck as I am? Like, why do you want to shun me out, bro? Like, I want to be your friend. <laughs> you know? But I'm sick and tired of telling people, Power I'm not the Barney. Man. I'm not the Barney. I'm not, I, I wear a mask, but I'm not Barney. I'm a real person back here. So I'm just like, you know what? If you guys don't want the love that I've been trying to give out, well, then fine. I'm just going to keep my love to my friends and whoever else wants to, you know, be part of, the, you know, the, the experience or whatever. But I'm... I'm this is the year of not giving a fuck about other people's feelings. <laughs> 2022? What, what year is it? Yeah, 2022. 2022. Perfect. Well, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> this All right, Marty McFly. Like... <laughs> this, is, this is the year. I'm just, I'm just done being nice because I have to establish myself as this really... Because I wear a mask, you know? So people don't know 
who it is. So there's, they have no reason to be treat me a certain way. So I have to prove, hey, man, this is who I am. I'm just done doing that. You find out for yourself. You know, if you don't like me, delete me. Whatever. But I'm just done trying to be that Mr. Nice Guy to everyone. Like, I'm, just, I'm done. I'm sick and tired of it. It's tiring. Sounds it's exhausting. Hard. Yeah. I'm yeah, so nice to everyone. And they, nobody cares. So it's like, you know what? I'm older than most of these kids. <laughs> I, I hate social media. We have someone that does all our social media stuff. She's great at it. And she'll ask me, well, this person said this and that. It's like, don't worry about what they said. Stop reading the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's not in the comments. It's the messages that sent to us. Like, hey, I really want to work with you. No, you don't. Send me a beat. If you really want to work with me, I'll send you a beat. And then they get to me. They're like, well, this beat's like, no, what I was thinking. I don't think I can do anything to this. I'm not even going to message back. I don't want to see that. Message me back. Say, yo, I need another beat. I'll send you one. I'm nice. I don't know what they think about me as some mean guy that doesn't want to, like, create something together with everyone but yeah I've, I've had a lot of artists that i worked with this year that are no i'm never probably gonna do another song with and we have music out right now music coming out with this new album and i'm probably never gonna talk to them again and it's like it's their choice and i'm just doubling down on their choice like okay that's what you want to do cool we're all grown-ups here you don't want to answer my messages I'm releasing the songs. I put a lot of love into this stuff. I'm not going to be the guy that doesn't really... I'm not Kanye. I'm not going to not release your song. You're on the song. It's already done, you know? The song... I'm not mad at the song. I'm not mad at you, really, either. But you want to play these, you know, side games. It's about the music for me, baby. So the music has to go on. We're going to release all the songs. We're going to release this album. Nothing's going to get in the way of this. And the haters can just keep on hating. And I'm just going to stay here in 2022 and not be nice back to them. I think Katy Perry has a song about haters gonna hate, right? Haters, uh, always, <laughs> haters always gonna hate. That would be Taylor Swift. That is my genre. Katy Close. Perry. Wait, is that Taylor Swift? Yes. Who oh, is a it? pop okay. artist, right? Not yep. a country star anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. She's now pop. So I'm just glad that it goes full circle back around to kind of where you were originally headed, where you know people you want to work with. Yep, I want to work with Katy Perry. <laughs> I want to work with Taylor Swift. With Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Dre, Katy. Um, what's that other lady's name? Um, Natasha Bedingfield, Beyonce. <laughs> um, I wish I could bring back some dead legends and work with them. Um, but I can't, whatever. We can't do Just that. get there's, real deep into necromancy, yeah, there's, man. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you dig up, um, Whitney Houston? <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're about Ouija boards. Yeah. I'm not a teacher, not a Ouija board. I just want to put song with her. Yeah, man, like, I have no, I'm, I feel great about this year, like, and since I'm not, like, posing anymore, like, I'm not just trying to be, like... Because people will say things where I'm not, like... I don't get offended, but, like, you know, I, I it's a word. It's something they said. So it's going to do what it's going to do in my brain. It's not going to stick, but it did it. And I'm going to put that on them, like, that's what that person said. That's what that person said. I'm done doing that. Like, I don't care what they say anymore. If somebody wants to come back to the circle, I'm, I'm still here, you know? Come back. Let's do a song. Let's do a song together. Let's throw a show together, whatever you want to do. But all I know is... When the time comes and I'm doing a million shows a day and I'm thinking back on the times where nobody wanted me to be on their roster, I probably would just laugh and just keep moving on. I won't dwell on it. I don't care. I it's, There's no point, you know? It's more fun to just do what we want to do right now, drive all the way to Wisconsin, do a <laughs> podcast interview, laugh the entire way back home, and meet on Tuesday, do more music, and see where this journey takes us for us, so the people that are involved in it because it's, I, I, I can't worry about the fans anymore and the haters I just it's not worth my time you know it's just not well awesome I, I mean I feel like this is a really good point to end yeah I can't Jordan, think like, of a better way to can. close it out there <laughs> Jake Farrell Elia yep you got yes. that right you got it was that like yeah. four? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he counted because he has to go back and edit. <laughs> well, it like sounded correct enough that I didn't correct you. <laughs> oh, no! Damn it! <laughs> okay, we're getting name like, tags next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Gordon, what I do is at the beginning of the show, I write down everybody's name. Like, uh, oh, yeah. you're yeah. 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 That's how you know he's a professional. Oh, don't let him fool you. Oh, uh, he's he playing solitary over there. Ten years, man. Ten years. 
Wow. We'll, we'll go into this off here. But guys, thank you again for taking the time to come out here. Us, Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks for having us. A lot of fun. I always and love driving real out quick, Wisconsin. if anybody wants to check out the music and follow you on social media, where can they find you? You can go to my link tree, or you can just go to my Instagram at Pharaoh Amus, um, P H A R O A M U S, or you can find me on any streaming platform, yep. same spelling. P H A R O A M U S. Yep. We're on all major platforms and uh, also SoundCloud, BarrelMoose.com. And you can find me on Shazam. You can Shazam my music if you want. You can um, listen to it on what's that other thing? On <laughs> Snapchat, my music sounds. Oh, and TikTok. Why don't you go ahead and do a something about your dog or your cat with my music on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I don't TikTok, but maybe you do, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, you can find me anywhere you can find this podcast. I am there, except for podcast only streaming services. I am not there, but I am in this. Just release show. all your songs yeah. as a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, is my genre a podcast? Yes. <laughs> I'm not hearing any words, song music with this guy. <laughs> and then it's the all end, intro. So yeah. I understand. <laughs> At the end, we say something. Yeah, thank you for listening to my podcast. My <laughs> podcast is changing. Well, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. And thanks for everyone to tune in this week. We'll catch you next time. Awesome.